Hey beautiful people, it's Mizko here and today I'm going to walk you through how to create a highly responsive table design inside Figma leveraging auto layout. So let's get right into it guys. But before we do, I just wanted to take a moment to thank every single one of you. Over the last two weeks, I've had over 700 students enroll into my Figma and UI Design Masterclass. Within the 700 students, 23 of them have already graduated and received their certificate. And I have been receiving an overwhelming positive response and feedback from every single one of my students. So I just want to let you guys know I am forever grateful. And if you do want to check out or learn more about my Figma and UI Design Masterclass, make sure to check the link in the description. Early bird prices are still intact, so take advantage of that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and design this highly responsive table design. So here I have a frame for 1440 uh, resolution and I've got a bit of a design, a sidebar and also a navigation up here. And if I resize this, it's obviously uh, responsive as well. Now, I only want to make sure that this table is going to be responsive inside this content area over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit F my keyboard and draw down a frame just to cover the content area. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit layout grid, the plus on the right hand side, change the grid to a column, change the count from five to 12. I'll change the red to a white, just in case people find it difficult to see the red on the uh, navy background. Change the margin to 32, and then change the gutter to 16. So this is why I've done this, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just rename this to grid, and I'll lock this for now and I'll turn this off. So when you are designing with a fixed sidebar for a dashboard, for example, what you what normally people would do is they would go ahead and add a grid layout on top of this, right? So they might go columns, they hit 12, um, just make it white so people can see it. And sometimes they might go left, right? And then they give it a width of 80%, uh, 80 pixels, and then they might offset it to the right hand side. Now this is a very, very inefficient way of doing grid layouts for dashboards like this. It's not scalable because as you scale this out, it's not gonna really fix and it just does not work. So I'm gonna turn that off and I'm gonna turn this grid back on and let me just quickly go ahead and constrain this to the left and right hand side, right? And you can see if I now stretch this out, this grid layout is responsive for this dashboard design, right? With a fixed sidebar, and you can see that the grid layout only extends to where the bounding box ends right here. So if you're, if you're designing a dashboard with a fixed uh, sidebar, this is how you would go ahead and create a, a responsive grid layout. All right, so let's go ahead and create this table. First thing I'm gonna do is hit F on my keyboard and I'm gonna draw down a frame. And then what I'm gonna do is just rename this to table. This is going to be the parent container. And I'm gonna hit Shift A and turn this into an auto layout. I'm gonna make sure that the auto layout direction is set to horizontal. I'm going to change the margin between the elements to zero and the padding to zero as well. And then I'm going to change the constraints and resizing for the horizontal axes to be fixed because I don't want this to collapse when I put items inside. So if I change it back to hug contents and I draw a box inside, you can see if I select the table, it's not full width anymore because it was set to hug contents and it will automatically hug whatever is inside. So if I hit Command Z and just revert back to what I had, changing this to fixed, and then I'm also changing the constraints to left and right. So if you can see now with the dotted lines, this is always going to be constraining to the left side and also to the right hand side as well. So if I give this a fill and I stretch this out, this entire container, this table, the container, right? The parent container is responsive. So we've got everything down pat for the container. So I'm turning off the fill. So th now that that has been correct, uh, created, I'm gonna hit F on my keyboard and I'm just gonna quickly draw down a, a frame down here. This is going to be the head of the table. So a table in a web page is created with a few elements. Inside a table, you first have the header, which is where you have all the labels and then underneath the, the header, you have a row. So now that you've got your head, I'm gonna go ahead and just rename this to head and I might just give this a background color so you can see this a little bit more clearly. You can see that, I'm gonna turn this grid off as well. We've got our very first head. I'm gonna hit T on my keyboard, and I'm gonna type in, for example, name. So this is going to be the, the name column. I'm gonna go ahead and select my head, hit Shift A, turn this into an auto layout component. I'm gonna make sure that the direction is horizontal, that there is no spacing in between, 
And in terms of the padding, this is going to be 16, 24, 16, and 24. You can create whatever uh, spacing that you want. And now what I'm going to do is I want to make sure that this item here, this head, in terms of resizing on the horizontal axes, it's not going to be fixed because I want it to be responsive. It's always going to be flushed to uh, whatever space it has. It's not going to be hugs because right now it is hugging the content, but I want this to be flushed all the way to the edges. I'm going to make sure that this will always fill the container, right? You can see that this now fills the container. So once that is done, what I actually want to do is I want to go ahead and hit shift A once again, and I want to wrap this header right inside a auto layout called a column, because when I'm creating this table, I want to make sure that I have a column for name, a column for description, a column for job details, and then another column for whatever I want, it might be notes, right? So now that I've got my column, I'm going to make sure that the direction is vertical, the pad, the, the margin is zero, and the padding is also zero as well. So you can see it is nicely tucked right inside, and I want to make sure that everything, uh, the horizontal axes for the resizing is fill container, but for the vertical axes, it's going to be hug contents. Because if I go ahead and now duplicate this head, I want to make sure that this column is always hugging all the contents inside. So now this head that we just duplicated, I'm going to rename this to row. I'm going to remove the background color and I can rename this to name to Michael. So this will be the first entry under the name, right? So if I go ahead now and duplicate row, I can now create five rows or six entries or seven entries, whatever, however many entries I want for this table, it will be created, right? Now, the magic is here. This is going to be highly responsive. So if I go ahead and select this column now and hit command D, boom! You've got two columns inside your table. I hit D, uh, command D again, you got three columns. And then you command D again, you got four columns, right? So this is how you can create a highly responsive and scalable table design inside Figma and it's systematic as well. So if you want to add more, all you have to do is hit command D and duplicate the rows. Now, the final thing that you need to do is you want to make sure that your table, right, is selected and you want to make sure that everything is constrained to the left and right. What you can do is a little hack is hit enter on your keyboard and this will nest down your selection for to whatever is inside the table. Inside the, the uh, table, we want to make sure that all the columns are filling the container. That's correct. Hit enter again. You also want to make sure that all the rows inside your table, uh, inside your columns, are also set to fill container. You can see that because they're fixed width, they extend outside of your table, and that means it's broken. So you want to make sure that fill container is selected. You hit enter once again. You want to make sure that all the text inside is also filling the container. So you can see that right now, everything is inside this bounding box and everything is systematic. So if I go ahead, right, and hopefully this works. If it doesn't work, you guys can scrap it. Mizco is just wasting your time, but I'm sure this will work. If I resize this now, this is going to be highly responsive as well. And this is the benefit of utilizing auto layout as well. If you decide to add some icons in the last column, because generally for the last column in a table, you have all your actions and icons. You can go ahead and imagine this is an icon that we're drawing down, and I'm gonna delete the word, uh, word Michael. I can go ahead and select this row, and I can align this to the right-hand side. So if I go ahead and just apply this to all these, so I'm, let me just go ahead and delete all these, and duplicate this row, you can see that, let's delete this one, oops. And if I resize this, this will always keep your actions flush to the right hand side and it's always going to be responsive. So from here, now if you wanted to design highly responsive designs, you can achieve it in seconds because if you wanted to do a design for 1920, you can see that it will automatically scale everything out for you. So hopefully this gives you a better understanding of how to create a responsive table inside Figma. And if you wanna learn how to use auto layout and master it to not just create a little component, but to create an entire web app, website, or even a mobile app, 
make sure to check out my Figma Masterclass course because we'll be covering everything to do with design systems, taking that design system to creating highly responsive designs inside Figma. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next video very soon. What the?